Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, we're going to be talking about transform orientations, but more specifically, we're going to talk about the difference between the global and local transform orientations. Now, the transform orientation is important because it affects how our move, scale, and rotate tools will work. What I mean by that is right now we have the move tool selected, and if I were to move this along the x-axis, it moves consistently with the global x-axis. Now the reason why it does that is because up at the top here in the viewport header, we have the transform orientation set to global. Now if we wanted to change that, we could set it to local, normal, gimbal, view, or 3D cursor. Now for this video, I'm only going to be talking about the global and local transformations, but I might do another one or two videos to cover the remaining four. So the global orientation is what's set by default. Um, this allows you to move objects in the global X, Y, and Z axis. So if we hit G and then X and then five, it's gonna move it along the global X, G, Y, five, also global Y and all of that jazz. So that's fine and dandy, but what if we don't want to move it along the global axes? Well, what if we wanted to move it along the local axes to the cube? Well, we could change the transform orientation to local, and then we notice that nothing happens. Now, the reason nothing happens is that the cube has no rotation on it. So if we were to rotate this uh, 45 degrees on the y-axis, now we can see that our object manipulator has rotated, and that's because we are now using the local axes for the object. Since now there's 45 degree rotation along that Y axis, the Z axis is now pointing at a 45 degree angle, and the X axis is also pointing at a 45 degree angle down. And this allows me to simply move this along a 45 degree angle, move this this way, and if I were to rotate this along the Z axis, um, now we can rotate it along a y-axis as well. All right, and that's basically the difference. So it's just a way for affecting transformations along its rotation angle. Something important to note though, let's just undo all of this and let's put it back. Now we did rotate that object in object mode. So again, we'll rotate that 45 degrees and the local axes have now changed, but if we enter into edit mode and we were to rotate this back, so let's rotate Y negative 45 and we end up back where we were, you'll see that the local axes are still pointing in the 45 degree rotation angle. And the reason for that is that we've only rotated the object 45 degrees, but the mesh has never really changed. So just something you want to keep in mind is that there is a difference between global space and local space. And that is that global space is the overall world scene. So if we switch back to global orientation, you can see like we have our entire 3D viewport here and it has its X, Y, and Z locations, rotations, and um, all of that. But then local space is what's attached to that object itself and into the, uh, the edit mode features. So if we were to rotate this or scale this, you'll notice that none of those settings or rotations have changed in uh, object mode. So if we rotate this, let's say Y 60 degrees, and then maybe rotate on the Z axis 15, or I guess 152 is what I pushed in. If we go back, you can still see that it's only rotated 45 degrees because we only rotated it in global space 45 degrees. So the transform orientations can help, but if you really want to affect them, do try to keep your rotations in global space instead of in local space, because it won't actually change the way that the object itself is rotated. And so your global axes will stay the same as your local axes if you're rotating in edit mode. So that basically covers the global and local transform orientations, as well as we talked a little bit about global space versus local space. And uh, that completes this video. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you in the next video.